Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Artistry of Code podcast. I'm Mark Urbanowicz, and I'm with Artur Wolne and Grzegorz Godlewski. Today, we are going to touch the hot topic of monorepos. Uh, but before we start, let's make sure you follow us on the streaming platform you are listening to us, like uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or subscribe us on the YouTube if you are watching the video uh, of this episode. You can also follow us on the social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. So having that said, let's start. Welcome to the Artistry of Code podcast, where we, together with our guests, are seeking ways of doing things right and having fun with it. Software, architecture, soft skills, teamwork, and other crazy buzzwords. Are you ready? Let's bring more value to the business. So today uh, we want to talk a bit about the monorepos and share with you our thoughts, some experience uh, we have and share our point of views on this uh, subject. As most of the stuff uh, in the programming world, everything is more or less opinionated. I would like you guys to share your opinions and initial thoughts about monorepos. What do you think? So when it comes to me, um, I'm personally not a fan of monorepos. I mean, all, all, all my professional life, I've used to work with uh, multi-repo setups. Uh, recently, I had the opportunity to work on two projects which were using monorepos. So I, I can see the benefits coming from it. But for me, essentially, that's a, like a complexity exploder to some extent. At least when I'm used to, you know, like cloud native uh, way of doing things where you rather had one app, one repo, and then one deployment or eventually multiple deployments coming from, you know, like the 12 factor uh, application uh, mode. So it, it's for me, like, understandable why people are using monorepos, but I'm not the fan, really. Yeah, me either. Uh, I also can answer that it depends. Yeah, if everything goes well with monorepos, then I, I kind of like it. But usually, from time to time, I encounter some problem that is so hard to to uh, tackle that I remind myself that I am not a big fan of monorepos <laughs> anymore. So uh, yeah, I also, if I am about to pick uh, one solution, I would usually prefer to go with single repos, with single CIs attached instead of monorepo setup. Uh, when it comes to me, uh, I, it's really hard to, and I wouldn't say basically I, I would pick any of the sites. <laughs> I really somewhere in the middle. In the past, I, I, would, uh, I wouldn't I would go with monorepo at all because the, the everything like tooling was far behind the monorepos and wasn't adjusted so everything had to be hacked in one way or another but uh, these days i'm somewhere in the middle and yeah, i would go with it depends yeah so this is the bit where we try to be a little bit more subjective now if you know our initial thoughts, you you probably see that we are a little bit polarized towards the uh, discussion. But then again, we will strive to be as objective as possible uh, in order to discuss the matter. So we wanted to take it from the angle of finding what are the benefits and the trade-offs of going with a monorepo specifically, right? So, guys, what kind of benefits or trade-offs and or trade-offs do you see? Yeah, despite my uh, rather negative attitude to it, I can see a big benefit. And first, I see in the CI. Uh, so, even though it is more complicated, uh, you can do it once and maintain like a one CI process for um, actually all the um, projects that you keep in the monorepo. Second big benefit that I see is that when you have uh, code that is maybe not tangled, but much dependent on each other, 
uh, and you need to um, update something, it's much easier to work with on the daily basis with Monorepo because then when you rebuild those projects, it's uh, the, the results are visible immediately. Yeah? You don't need to do anything extra like build, publish packages, publish alpha packages just to test how uh, how it will work eventually. You just have it given on the plate. I really with you uh, in terms of like alpha packages and uh, all this crazy stuff uh, when uh, you want to like test or preview something uh, with the multi repo setup. And this is one one case where the monorepos really shine to me. It's super easy uh, with monorepo to to set up, uh, let's say, preview environments, for example, because uh, basically you, you you have a commit and <laughs> you are checking out the the repo at this commit uh, from the PR and you are good to go. You can build all all the stuff from from this commit. And uh, everything will be really up to date as you want, yeah. So, so whatever adjustment you've made, it, it it's there, yeah? and it's super easy. There are approaches to this uh, topic in the tooling. Uh, for example, I, if I recall correctly, Quovery doing that uh, in the way that with multi repo setup, that with the preview environment, they will pick the uh, branch you have on this uh, on this PR, and they will look for the same branch on the other repos. Or the, if the same branch does not exist in their other repos, uh, they will pick main or master, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so this this can be tackled, but it's obviously more more complex, in my opinion. And uh, especially with um, with the CI and this this preview stuff all, all around this this topic, to me, it's super good benefit of the mono repo uh, that uh, you can do all the stuff. Uh, just with the bash script, for example, like a bunch of if statements, for example, or using some diff, etc. Compared to like trying to communicate between repos <laughs> and different uh, CI pipelines, or doing the multi-repo CI pipeline, th th this is this can be easily super complex and uh, really <laughs> becoming rocket science. Yeah, so this is partially about the the trade-offs, like. If I were to point some benefits, I definitely agree for, you know, like the code reuse. Uh, it makes it super easy to some extent to import types from if 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 you're in the Node.js space with TypeScript, for instance, it's making it super easy to import types from other places. Well, it's super easy. Okay, that could be like an overstatement, but it's generally easier than a, in a multi-repo scenario to import types from the other project where you have some dependencies. So what is really nice um, is that when you have like multiple teams working on different projects which are residing in the same monorepo, most likely do, during the CI pipeline, your changes, if they are going to break the other team's project, you will know about that, right? So this is something, and that assumes you're ha having like a monogamous language-wise uh, setup so that the tooling is reused. Because if you're going to go into monorepo microservices with multiple languages, this is only <laughs> getting more and more uh, like dirty, so to speak, right? If you're going to have like a Python dependency or like a C-sharp microservice or things like that, and your Node.js app, that's just going to grow in, in terms of complexity, right? So there's some like spacing here. And I would like to mention uh, only a couple of trade-offs, which I also have on my mind. And first of all, these are like uh, code specific. So I'm coming from the world where of extreme programming, where there was the advice that you need to have a, a build being done under 10 minutes. I can imagine it very quickly coming or becoming a fact that those mono repo builds, if you have multiple projects, they're going to take way much more than that at, at some point, right? This is something which makes me to be a little bit against. So if you like to have fast CI, fast feedback, we talked about this on the show a number of times, to have a very short feedback loop uh, time-wise, that might not be the, the, the best idea. The other thing which I see from organizational perspective is that you can have, if you have teams in your company, 
and they are developing different pieces of that project inside a monorepo, it, it's generally okay if they're going to see one another's changes, that things are you know, you know, like happening in the company, that's fine. But the problem starts if you try to hire an external company, like an offshore company and an offshore team, and you need to like you need their help for a number of months. Uh, in order just to make something happen. And now you're faced with the question, should they have the access to the full monorepo? Yes or no? What about the business intelligence? You know, So there are like different drivers for the decision of monorepo or not, which are relevant in, in certain contexts, right? So if you're a product company that doesn't hire too much and you, you, you cannot like, afford exposing business intelligence probably that's not the best setup <laughs> but if if you don't really care okay you can do, do it, a lot of ndas really so you can say okay, we did the paperwork so the external team is not allowed to look in that directory they won't certainly they won't because there's an AD, nda for 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 this one right so there are some aspects which we don't consider on the code level right uh which are also relevant in that context in regards to, to long CI time, yeah, it's it's a challenge to me uh, or something uh, which has to be like addressed wisely because basically with uh, with the monorepo, you have to like find a way to run what is uh, really required for the, the, for the given commit. Yeah? Uh, so in all time when I was working with the monorepo, like uh, in much simpler way than we have we are doing that in the in the uh, community uh, these days. We were using just, for example, the GitLab only on change or whatever what it was called. Yeah, so if the CI picked up the changes in the folder, it was running some tasks, and it was working better or worse, but in generally quite okay. These days we have the tools like NX, for example, or Turbo Repo uh, recently. And the tools are like helping us, like to to pick up the the, the tasks which should should run. Yeah, but it's it's the same uh, risk as with, for example, the uh, running using Jest uh, functionality of running tests uh, only changed. For example, when it tries to compare the current state of the code with the main branch uh, and run uh, only affected uh, tests because it, the tool can not pick up the changes because of some quirks yeah? and uh, or uh, some stuff can be cached in the wrong way uh, so uh, you either uh, go with running too much yeah <laughs> or uh, which is i would say worse you you end up with running not everything <laughs> which should run on the given change yeah yeah, that's that's true. I I consider switching to mon, uh, monorepo as some kind of moving the complexity from the organizational level, from the personal level of, of developers to to technical level. So the complexity pretty much stays the same, but there's uh, other actor who is doing the job. Yeah, and the problem uh, that I see with monorepo, so so all of the challenge, is actually uh, covering all the edge cases yeah so uh, you Marek told to just a few minutes ago that tooling is picking up fast and it's uh, much better than it was a few years ago but in my opinion it's still not covering all the uh, edge cases and I stumbled upon a few of them and it was like a very painful process to um, to to uh, get rid of those problems and there is also something that is actually addressed but uh, in my experience hasn't been implemented correctly and I see like monorepo as a factor that increases the risk to not make it correctly and this is versioning, yeah? versioning of packages inside the monorepo. Yeah? In general, it's much easier to to follow the semver uh, rules when you have uh, separate repositories. Uh, it's easier to remember about it. Yeah, so I consider it uh, much easier to to break the versioning in in monorep mono and I've seen it uh, multiple times already. And I can totally sustain that. Uh, so I just recently were was facing the very same issue where we have a monorepo setup, which is based on npm workspaces, and there's even a bug in npm 
which is uh, related to the NPM version bumping functionality, because then if you do a bump, including the workspaces themselves, you know that behavior that you do like the NPM version patch. So it's going to bump up the patch version, and then it's going to create a git commit for it and also automatically tag it, right? And now the bug is that if you do it, it's going to bump the versions on the main package JSON and the ones in the workspaces, but it's not going to commit the change in the workspaces. So it only commits the one at the top and the ones in the packages remain uncommitted. And the reason is that, or the conversation in the ticket ended up in a, in a way that it's not easily solvable because when you do NPM versioning, you version the whole mono repo, really. You do, the NPM version patch doesn't know how to version your packages and if any of them should be bumped at all, right? So this isn't really a pending issue in, in the community. Yeah, but there is also an issue when you like change one package, which is a dependency of another one. So if in the one that you change, for example, you bump up the minor version, but for the dependency, because that change might be only a patch. Uh, upgrade. So you, now you need to manage like two packages in one commit, one uh, change set. You, you need to cover two uh, different uh, level of uh, of upgrades for those packages. And of course, there is tooling. Yeah, but uh, like, uh, like I said, tooling need to pick up to all the edge cases. And I I consider people to be better at it at least for now. But maybe you know we have an a AI, maybe AI enhanced <laughs> mono repos will change the world. Who knows? Yeah, I, I think that's a good niche to 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 use AI like to, to support mono repos in a better way. Um, yeah, we may work on this project maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, well, in regards to that uh, cloud tooling uh, picking up. Uh, I was thinking more uh, about stuff like platforms uh, for the deployments uh, or like uh, one of our beloved uh, Sonar Cloud, for example, when in, in the past you couldn't really attach the monorepo project there because it was basically not working uh, because the, the scripts couldn't pick up the, the, the projects inside. While these days, uh, often you can even select which part of the monorepo should be analyzed or something like So, So uh, this is the good part. In regards to the versioning, this is the question if you like uh, in the given in the given case, if you really need to uh, version the packages inside there, yeah? because if uh, for example, at, at at Fleek, we we have like mostly deploying all, everything together because we don't really need to uh, at, at least most of the stuff, yeah. So we don't need like uh, super granular versioning, yeah. So so for example, in our case, we don't really see the issue with that. So it all depends yeah, on on the use case, yeah. If you have like clients or what whoever using the the packages like granularly from this model repo yeah that's definitely a challenge yeah so in my case like it's also the case that i'm rather deploying all the things together so it's it's okay for me to version all the packages the the same right well they're not real packages so to speak because they are just you know like versions of the code i i need a tag which i'm then using to issue a deployment right so it, it's fine for me but then again the, when we're talking about you know like where things are missing it's like you said the tooling is picking it up but i think what's really missing on the market when it comes to mono repos is like a mono repo centric solutions because all the things like turbo repo and the these kind of things they are there to help you to deal with a complexity in form of a, like a patch really it's not a, like a healing solution it's really a patching solution right so we see that there is that niche that the people are using mono repos and they're having some problems let's try to provide something or we solve this for ourselves and then let's make a product out of it because we already mastered this particular bit right but there are other tools like not related to versioning which kind of fail to keep up and this is something which we talked about before the show it's like our ides working on on the projects which are in a mono repo 
are actually killing those projects are killing the ID. So I, myself, I'm having you know like a 32 gigs of RAM, 12 uh, cores uh, system, and it's difficult for WebStorm to pull off a project which is having like two uh, services inside. Uh, that's an npm based uh, project so i assume most of the things are coming from the libraries and the amount of libraries which are there so in order to be able to work with such a repo in my id i had to enable the power save mode which is disabling background checks some inspections these kind of things which for me it's a loss. Essentially, it's a loss because I could have feedback from the IDE sooner, but due to the fact that the AD, IDE is not able to keep up, I had to give like take a pass on this one. Yeah, I totally support this. And uh, in the end, it doesn't matter if you really use WebStorm or you use uh, VS Code. Uh, every IDE has challenges uh, with the with the performance uh, in the mono repos. But I would say that in my opinion and in my observations, uh, what I found is that in Node.js world, at least, the core of the issue is not uh, in the IDEs, but in the JS tooling itself. So the, the most challenging stuff, which is slowing down the the IDEs are, the, in my observations, uh, are TypeScript uh, compiler, or the language TypeScript language service, and the Slint, basically. So, so I often hit the the, uh, the IDE warning uh, with uh, couldn't get the response from Slint service in twenty seconds, yeah? which is ridiculous, uh, basically. But uh, it's somehow connected because one of uh, my colleagues uh, at Flick uh, did the, like good investigation on on this topic, and uh, it's caused often by the fact that as with m multiple projects with the more projects the typescript projects you have in in, in the code base the slower Slint goes basically because uh, it tries to like it can't it's it's uh, related to what you Gregor said that it's like we are trying to patch the stuff instead of like maybe reinventing it from the from the bottom up uh, so the Eslint is trying to like compile every project separately, going through uh, all the TypeScript stuff uh, one again and again and again. So if you have ten projects, including one library, it's trying to like compile it uh, the the same library ten times eh? because uh, and if you, it, it and it bubbles up uh, with more dependencies, uh, and this is what is slowing down really. Uh, so I think this is a really good statement that we are still in the phase of like patching instead of like, getting something which is really monorepo centric. Yeah, but uh, tooling is is not only the CI/CD and uh, and EDE. Uh, I, for example, had uh, quite a big issue with the SNCC. That was about the uh, the log file being out of sync, and but but the problem was deeper in, in the implementation. In general, I think that um, you know the when Monorepo started to became some kind of buzzword, uh, and and has been used in the newer projects run by I I, I believe uh, younger developers from the new generation. I I feel like the old tools that we all know and like and uh, yeah managed to get used to. Uh, now we need to uh, catch up because the approach has changed. Yeah, at least I believe that uh, the the npm a few years ago was like designed not to go into the um, into the mono repos, rather one project per repository, uh, and then one package out of this project. And lots of tools has been built in JavaScript and in TypeScript in the way that it actually needs to understand the internals of node execution, internals of how JS and TypeScript is, is actually handled. And now it may happen, and I suspect it happened in, in that case, that some tools just need to 
still observe all the changes uh, in in the in the tooling like NX, like Lerna, and other stuff, just to make sure that the validation that they do is correct. Because in my case, I get like an alert that actually blocked me from co- from pushing my my pull request, uh, which was fine to production. And you know, when you don't have access to to overcome this this warning, then actually you're stopped. So uh, the the problem was big, and I couldn't solve it on my way because on, on when I used the the right tooling that actually set up the the workspaces uh, in the monorepo, everything seems to be fine. Like no changes was needed to to make it work. Still hasn't been accepted. So so there's a lots of tools that we need to um, evaluate if. If you if we consider switching to Monorepo, if they will still work, and this is I, I believe lots of work, and it's like with the Pareto rule, yeah, you it's easy to make it work in in, in the positive uh, paths, but it's super hard. Like it takes eighty percent of time to to solve those twenty percent of of the problems that we are seeing rarely. Yeah, so when you described, uh, you know, like uh, the, the the way we approach this, this made me think that we might sound like multi-repo boomers to the young, younger generation, as you call it, which I would really love to refrain from if, if possible, because we are sending the message to you guys as there as well. Single repo dino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, but then again, just to quickly, you know, like uh, go back to one point which you guys made uh, made about the complexity is that I think we need to understand that the complexity of software only grows, and uh, if if we are going to push it out from from our code base and just think that things are going to be easier if we have mono repo, it's like you Arthur said, somebody else is going to have to deal with the complexity coming out of it. So I kind of urge everybody to consider the macro. Um, just so when you're thinking about making the decision, and that's really an architectural decision, and due to that fact, it's a game of trade-offs. To like pay attention to the trade-offs, and some of those effects of those trade-offs may not be on your desk, but that might be on the DevOps side, that might be on the infrastructure side, that might be on the deployment side. So understanding the macro here is is a key thing really to make an educated decision about this like also considering the orga- organizational aspects which i've mentioned right whether we're going to open up this to somebody will all the teams be okay with working on the same repo right consider those drivers because i find this as the most important thing to consider uh, before going into that particular direction or the other one yeah that's right I also see that uh, you know it's worth to try new things and maybe uh, if you consider switching to monorepo just carefully pick the use case and start with something small yeah verify if it works for you if it uh, like solve more problems that brings so the, this is the, uh, the the thing and don't be like uh, don't let yourself, you know, be uh, focused too much on how fun it is to to do a single repo or be a dino dinosaur that does not want to change because just because <laughs> because it's not like it it was used to. So yeah, that's my final thoughts on this matter. Yeah, so it's like Ken Beck once said, "If if I hate it, I need to try it." So that's the, the that's the approach. Yeah, as developers, I believe uh, we enjoy trying new things, but we often tend to put ourselves in really shitty situations, <laughs> often because we we don't uh, really think enough before in, uh, implementing the given tool in the project. But yeah, we all have to deal <laughs> with that, <laughs> fighting with the hype and going purely with the hype. Yeah, so I don't think we can give any like uh, solid recommendations on this topic, but I think we shared enough experience and uh, some some point of views on, on on this topic. So as with almost everything in the software development, 
it depends yeah. <laughs> if if you should go with, with, or not uh, with the mono repo. Always think about uh, all the pros and cons in your given use case because it can be completely different from from our cases. Thank you guys for this episode. We are really curious about your thoughts and your experience with the mono repos. So please share. Uh, with us on uh, comments under the YouTube episode or the social platforms posts. And we want to wish you lovely springtime and hear you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. That's all for today. Thanks for spending your time with us. Visit our page on Facebook and Twitter, leave us a comment under the episode, subscribe to the updates, and share it with others. We would like to hear your feedback so that we can prepare more interesting content for you to enjoy. Hear you next time!